Hello my health savvy friends, it's Dr. Tom Mickelright here. Today, talking about cancer prevention and the lifestyle habits that really make a difference. Now, maybe you've had this situation. You're going about your normal day to day and you get a phone call saying that a friend, a family member or a co-worker has been diagnosed with cancer. Now, if you've had this, you'll feel a whole wave of different emotions. But one of the things that you'll start thinking is, why them? And you'll start questioning your own body and asking, why not me? And is there anything that I could do to reduce my own risk of getting that same disease? Stories are everywhere of people getting this life-changing diagnosis of cancer. And I can't come to this video and tell you not to be worried. But what I can do is tell you about some of the concrete things you can do today that will reduce your risk of cancer later in life. Let's start though by talking about what is cancer. Our bodies are made up of hundreds and thousands of cells, all of them growing, dividing, dying, and carrying a range of different functions in response to chemical signals in the body. Now, over time, those cells start to pick up damage that affects the way they work. And some of this damage affects the way they grow and divide, such that that growth becomes uncontrolled. When that happens, when the growth starts spiraling out of control, you get a cancer that starts to form and can spread to different parts of the body and carry on growing. And as it grows larger and larger, it starts affecting all the healthy organs around it. Survival from cancer has doubled in the last 40 years in the UK, but even now, survival rates are just at 50%. So if we can intervene early and prevent you from getting cancer in the first place, that is a massive win. A 2018 study looking at 26 different types of cancers found that 42% of them were due to avoidable risk factors. That means that just by making some small tweaks to your habits and your lifestyle, you could avoid almost half of all cancers. That is massive and we need to get that message out there, which is exactly what we're going to explore in this video. I'm going to give you six tips, six key factors for you to start working on your lifestyle that will drastically reduce your risk of developing cancer. Let's start with number one, the biggest cause of all cancers. The biggest thing that you can do to reduce your risk is to stop smoking today. According to Cancer Research UK, smoking is responsible for over a third of all cancers. It's the leading cause. And as well as causing cancer, smoking increases your risk of a whole host of different illnesses and conditions affecting pretty much everywhere in your body. Cigarette smoke contains over 5,000 chemicals that flood your body once that smoke hits your lungs. And at least 50 of those chemicals have been shown to cause cancer. In fact, they're so toxic you don't even need to be a smoker to get the harm. Secondhand smoke is just as harmful, and this is a crazy statistic, but it's estimated that secondhand smoke, so just living in close quarters with someone that's a smoker, increases your risk of lung cancer by up to 30%. So even if you're not bothered about stopping for you, stop smoking for your kids or your partner because their risk is being increased too. So the obvious advice is stop smoking today, but I realize the nicotine in cigarettes is hugely addictive. Other options are nicotine replacement gum or patches, which you can get from the pharmacy, or vaping or e-cigarettes. They still all contain nicotine so that you're still addicted to a substance and we don't completely know the long-term implications of using vapes or e-cigarettes. So there's a bit of a question mark there. But the main thing is getting off cigarettes. There are also prescription medications that you can take now which reduce the smoking cravings. So talk to your pharmacist or your doctor about those. And there is also a very handy video on this channel about digital tools, i.e. health apps, that can help change smoking behaviors for good. Okay, next big lifestyle risk factor is diet. Now, the media loves linking diets to cancer, and there are so many myths out there. What's more, health gurus and influencers talk loads about antioxidant supplements. And although antioxidants might have an impact on lowering cancer risk, especially when you're eating them, there is no evidence that antioxidant supplements make any difference to cancer risk. All that said, there are two food groups 
but where the evidence is starting to build behind their links with cancer. The main one is processed meats. So the World Health Organization, their International Advisory Committee recently came out and said that the evidence showing that processed meats cause cancer is as compelling, as strong as the evidence linking smoking to cancer. Now that is a wild statement, given that processed foods are still all about us in our environment. Processed meats in particular are anything that's been cured, smoked or had preservatives added. So typically it's sausages, bacon, packets of ham, spam, salami. Those kind of things all contain chemicals in them which can increase cancer risk. Red meat also may be a contributor towards cancer, although the evidence is a little less strong than for processed meats. So you can make some simple changes today. If not getting rid of red meat and processed meats altogether, just look at having a meat-free day in the week, like a meat-free Monday. Or maybe try swapping some of your red and your processed meats for chicken or fish or maybe even meat-free alternatives. The second food group where the evidence is building in its role in cancer is fiber. But this time, it's on the other end of the spectrum. Fiber could be a really good thing. Quick school recap, fiber is a component in our foods that can't be broken down by our digestion. So it tends to go straight into our bowel, straight into our poop and out of our bodies. The thinking is, because it helps with our digestion, it helps our system to flush out toxins that are in our guts. So they're spending less time sitting around in our bowels, harming our cells. In fact, some researchers looking at a range of different studies examining fiber and cancer concluded that just by eating the daily recommended amount of fiber every single day, we could reduce our risk of bowel cancer by up to 20%. That means then taking food as a whole, you can potentially get a double whammy here. If you swapped out your meat for some high fiber, non-meaty alternatives like beans or pulses, or maybe look to introduce some high fiber snacks into your diet like popcorn or nuts, all of those things will help reduce your likelihood of developing nasty conditions later on in life. Okay, lifestyle factor number three, reducing harmful sun exposure. Why is the sun so bad? Well, along with getting all that lovely heat and sunlight, the sun also produces a lot of UV radiation or ultraviolet radiation, which over time damages the DNA in our cells. And as this damage builds up, our cells have the risk of growing uncontrollably leading to cancer. There are several different types of skin cancer, but the most concerning is called melanoma. And that's because melanoma tends to be more aggressive and more likely to spread throughout the body. Melanoma is also the fifth commonest cancer. And according to the Skin Cancer Foundation, just five or more sunburns to the skin doubles your risk of melanoma. What's crazy though, is that melanoma is the most preventable of all of the different types of cancer. It's estimated that up to 86% of melanoma could be avoided with good sun protection. The best sun protection, of course, is just staying out of the sun in the first place, right? But assuming you don't want to just live inside a closet nine till five, the next best option is good sun cream. There are two main things you should be looking for in your sun cream. The first is the sun protection factor or SPF. That's the number you'll see on the front of the bottle. SPF gives you an idea of how protective the cream is from UVB, which is the type of UV that burns, UVB for burns. So you want a high level of SPF, at least 30 in your sun cream. The other thing to pay attention to is the UVA star rating. UVA causes aging of the skin. And I recommend at least making sure your cream has a four star UVA rating. So at least SPF 30, four star UVA. That gives you good coverage across your ultraviolet spectrum. In addition to some good sun cream though, the hottest part of the day tends to be from 11 a.m. till 3 p.m. So look to kind of be under a shade or wear a hat or under a parasol during that time. Keep an eye on kids and babies and make sure they've got an even higher sun protecting cream. I usually recommend SPF 50 for those groups. And lastly, keep a close eye on your skin. You may already have moles or lumps or bumps Keep an eye for any changes. There are loads of good solutions out there from just photographing your skin on a regular basis to using health apps like MySkin. 
And if you check out my YouTube video on skin cancer health apps, you'll see a number of apps out there that can help you really get to know your skin better. Okay, factor number four, and this one might surprise you a little bit, but Cancer Research UK estimates that 12% of all cancers are due to alcohol. The scientific thinking is that alcohol is broken down by our bodies into a chemical called acetaldehyde, which is the chemical that can potentially cause cancer. Drinking alcohol also produces free radicals, these are highly reactive chemicals that have become known for whizzing around our body and damaging DNA in cells. When there's just a small amount in our body, we manage to mop them up and clean them out pretty easily. But when their numbers start increasing, for instance, by drinking alcohol, it becomes harder to manage them and they can wreak more damage. So together, the free radicals and the acetaldehyde, not good. Drinking alcohol can also increase your risk of throat, mouth and esophageal cancer by up to five times and double your risk of developing liver cancer. And the news isn't much better for red wine. The media seem to yo-yo on whether red wine is good or bad for you, but despite some of the health benefits from red wine, drinking red wine will not protect you from cancer. The thing with alcohol is there's no real safe level, so I would probably just start with trying to reduce. Aim for some drink-free days in the week, and there are some great health apps, again, that can support you with this. Or maybe look to change your environment so there's just less temptation around you. Make sure you haven't got alcohol in the house. Or if your friends are keen to meet up for drinks after work, maybe suggest somewhere else where alcohol is going to be a little less accessible than the pub or a bar. If despite those things you're still struggling, it's definitely worth accessing an alcohol support service. These aren't scary places, but they can offer you peer support, mental health assistance, and they can also, if they've got nurses or doctors around, prescribe you treatments that can help with the craving that comes from heavy alcohol use. Lifestyle factor number five, weight management. Being overweight or obese seems to increase your risk of over 13 different types of cancer. One study looking at over 30 year olds between 2011 and 2015 found that excess weight caused one in 20 cancers in men and one in 10 cancers in women. But there are a few different reasons for this. Some fats does actually produce the hormone estrogen, which seems to drive the growth of some cancers, especially in women. So having excess fat leads to more estrogen, which leads to these cancers growing faster. The other thing is excess weight changes the way our bodies manage and metabolize sugar, as well as increasing general inflammation throughout our body, both of which are thought to play a key role in the development of cancers. But the good news is all of this is reversible. Research has shown that in women who lost 5% of their weight, their risk of breast cancer was reduced. And actually, if they went further than this and had bariatric surgery, their risk of cancer reduced by a third. That all means if we can manage our weight and make sure it's kept within the healthy BMI spectrum of between 19 and 25, we can drastically reduce our cancer risk. Now, I know it's not as easy as just lose weight. Once we start building up a bit of excess weight, it leads to hormonal, psychological and physical changes in our body, which makes it a lot harder to lose the weight. Fundamentally, all weight loss strategies start with changing our diet and increasing our physical activity. But do check out one of my previous episodes where we talk about digital tools with a great evidence base showing that they can reduce your weight. And the final, important change you can make to your lifestyle is making sure you make the most of your screening opportunities. Screening is all designed to pick up cancer early before it's had a chance to spread or grow or become more difficult to treat. Take breast cancer for instance. If you're picked up late with advanced breast cancer, just three out of 10 patients survive the disease for five years or more. Compared to those people who have breast cancer picked up early, and almost all patients survive the disease for five years or more. That's a massive difference, and we see that pattern played out across all types of cancer. In the UK, we have three main cancer screening programs. The first is for cervical cancer. All 12 to 13 year old girls and boys are vaccinated against the HPV vaccine, which later on in life becomes the biggest cause of cervical cancer. Then from the age of 25, 
women and some trans and non-binary people are invited for a cervical smear which screens for cervical cancer. Once people hit their 50s, if you're female or again some trans and non-binary people, you'll be invited to your breast cancer screening. And for patients that are in their 50s, 60s or 70s, depending on where you are in the UK, every two years you'll be sent a bowel cancer screening kit to complete at home and send off to your practice. All of these are designed to pick up cancer early and stop it in its tracks. So one of the best things you can do is make the most of this opportunity and prioritize your health. Just before we wrap up, I want to say a quick word about aspirin because I'm often asked about it. And that's because in 2021, there was a landmark study which took the results of a hundred other studies affecting 250,000 different participants. And that study concluded that taking regular aspirin could reduce your risk of death from cancer by 20%. This is massive news. So why isn't everyone taking aspirin? And that's because there are still a few unanswered questions. We don't know which cancers that works best for. We don't know which patient groups, you know, what conditions do you need to have or not have in order for this to be the best solution for you. We know aspirin does have some side effects. It can cause stomach ulcers. It can cause exacerbations of people's asthma and cause asthma attacks. Also, there was a second study that was done a little bit later that found that in patients who were 70 plus, aspirin didn't seem to make any positive difference at all. And in fact, what it might do is increase your risk of being diagnosed with later stage cancer. So there are still a few question marks about the use of aspirin. And that's why doctors generally aren't recommending it to all their patients just yet. That's it for this video. So I just want to recap on what we've covered. The six lifestyle factors that impact cancer risk. Number one is smoking. So if you are smoking, start setting a date ready to stop for good. And there are a range of different things you can do to support you on that journey. Number two, diet. See if you can cut out processed meat completely, or at least start reducing your intake of red meat and processed meat and getting more fiber into your diet. Number three, sun protection. Make sure you're avoiding the sun the hottest part of the day and using an appropriate sun protecting cream where you can. Number four, alcohol. Try reducing the amount of alcohol. There is no safe limit, but any days without alcohol or any ways you can try to reduce the amount you're drinking will be beneficial. Number five, weight management. Bring your weight down so you sit in that healthy BMI range because excess weight is a contributor to loads of different types of cancer. And then number six, maximize your opportunities to get yourself screened so that if you do have cancer, it's picked up at the very earliest stage. If you'd like to find out more, I definitely recommend checking out the Cancer Research UK website, the American Cancer Society, and also the Skin Cancer Foundation. All of those had loads of information and informed a lot of the content in this video. Speaking of which, if you like this video, please hit like, share it with friends or family that you think would be interested and subscribe. We've got more videos coming out like this with hints and tricks and tips for how you can take back control of your health and wellness. If there's anything you'd like to hear more about or see a video about, or if you've got any other suggestions for these videos, please comment below. I do read every single comment that gets posted and your support is massively appreciated. For now though, thanks for watching, thanks for supporting, and I hope to see you on the next video.